Hello and welcome back to another exciting- I'm- I can't make this choice, you guys! <sighs> okay, so on one hand... On one hand, you'll put her out of her misery and she'll be better off. Free from pain and all that. On the other hand... <sighs> people can come in and say goodbye if everybody hasn't said goodbye yet and... You wouldn't be the one directly responsible for the ending of another person's life. <sighs> Guys, I don't know what to do. <sighs> okay. She's gonna be, she's, she's no pain. There's no pain anymore. She's fine. I, uh, I pull Rebecca's life support. What? <laughs> I pull Rebecca's life support. Rebecca flatlines less than a minute later. It's what she wanted, but it isn't what I wanted. If I were to refuse, she would only spend her remaining days in agony waiting to die. But there's so much I wanted to say, so much I should have said to her, her friends, her family. They never got to say goodbye. I took that from him. I panic. Now she's gone. I killed her. That's why I don't want to choose, you guys! Um. What? Just happened. <laughs> okay. Oh, is this back to the beginning of the game? Overdue rent. Rebecca was always too focused on on her writing to consider employment, but we managed until I was demoted. Photos, more photos. It's a photograph of me and Rebecca at a party, just a few days after we'd met. I was a loner at university. I spent a lot of nights in at the student bar alone, hoping that I wouldn't be. One night I wasn't. I met Rebecca. She very quickly introduced me to her circle of friends and invited me to a party later that week. We kissed for the first time that night. Ah. Notebook. Notes and nice things. It's one of Rebecca's old notebooks. She used to write her short stories in these. Okay, great. Uh-huh. Ooh, page five. What happened to three and four? Come with us, page five. Afraid. It was the only em Bleh. It was the only emotion Jane could put into words. The child never left. She stayed by Jane's side until the terrified woman left for work. Acting normal it seemed quite the task for her. Jane returned home wishing that the child would be gone. Alas, she was she was sat quiet as ever in, at the kitchen table, turning her head to see to Jane as she entered the room. Jane spent the day trying to ask the child questions about her name, where she came from, who she was. The woman was met with silence each time. She gave up, continued as normal. If she ignored her, she might go away. But wherever Jane went, the child followed. Except to work, apparently. Wherever Jane sat, the child sat against her. Ignorance wasn't an option. When nighttime fell, the child followed her closely throughout her routine, silent and expressionless. As Jane hesitantly climbed into bed, the child stood where she had done the night before and pointed, knitting her brow once again. Carefully, Jane offered the other side of the bed to her. The child did as she wanted and lay next to the trembling woman. Jane pes pressed her back against the wall as the child stared at her from the pillow beside her own. Yeah, <laughs> this is what you want. They stared at each other for a while before the child sighed that soft little sigh again and closed her eyes. Jane didn't dare move her gaze for what felt like hours. Though the child didn't move, her eyes remained closed and she was softly breathing. Jane knew the child didn't eat, nor that it used the bathroom. There was very little reason to believe the child needed to sleep. Paranoid, the woman remained obstinately awake. Come with us, page six. Jane opened her eyes quickly, breathing rapidly as she realized she had fallen asleep. 
The child's eyes were open, though her position had not moved. It scared Jane to wake up to those dark, staring, dark eyes staring at her once again. The room was still dark. Jane desperately tried to regulate her breathing. As her eyes swept the room, she let out a small shriek. Jane scrambled to sit up in the bed, pressed her back against the wall. There was a second child stood at the foot of her bed, staring at her with the exact same dark eyes. This child appeared to be a boy. The hair was shorter, but just as dark and flat, and it partially obscured his eyes. The child was also wearing a nightgown. They appeared to be a matching set, though they didn't acknowledge each other, only her. Jane very briefly tore her eyes away from the second child to look at the first. She was sitting now, too, but her gaze was fixed on Jane. Come with us. They spoke in unison. The woman sucked in her breath and fought the urge to cry. She shook her head a little in response. Jane then felt the first child sit closer, her hair brushing against her arm. Jane looked down. The girl was staring right at her, leaning her head against her shoulder once again. Come with us. She spoke, her voice low. Somehow it calmed her. She felt herself able to breathe again. Where? She asked the girl. The child simply sighed and looked ahead, resting on her shoulder. Jane moved her gaze to the boy. He was staring at her. Where? She asked again. In response, he moved to where the girl stood the night before. Jane blinked at him and looked down to the bed. Do you want to get on the bed too? She asked fearfully. He did so, leaning against the girl, looking ahead as she did. All Jane could do was focus on taking breaths in and out. They sat like that until morning. Creepy kids! Weird creepy kids! Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. TV. Attack of the Giant Leeches. Nice. This is one of Rebecca's old movies. She used to make fun of me for liking it. She said it was a really bad film. It is. Um, I am not going to watch it right now, but I might watch it later. Like, not here, but on my own time, because Attack of the Giant Leeches is one I have not seen. And since it's on here, I might as well. Uh, let's go with Ring. Let's start from the bottom, because Diary seems like I'll be reading a lot. It's the engagement ring that I used to propose a few weeks after we moved in together. Aww. It was a very cheap ring. We didn't have a lot of money at the time, so I was worried she wouldn't like it. I don't think she did, though she would never admit it to me. I wouldn't care if my ring came out of one of those 50 cent things. Just, you know, something. A token of love. It's all you really need, isn't it? Isn't it? It's the crystal graduation bear I gave to Rebecca when she graduated. Where she had encouraged me to become more confident and outgoing. I pushed and toured Rebecca to finish university. I was so proud of her that day. And so very grateful. I'm getting one thing in this story. Their relationship seems kind of one-sided. You know what I mean? I'll explain it in j just a bit. Hang on. Hang on. I'll explain my thoughts. A preserved rose. Rebecca gave this to me last Valentine's Day. But on the last Valentine's Day we ever spent together. She said it would last forever so that she could make up for all the Valentine's Day she was going to miss. <sighs> it is wilting. Entry one. She said no. My dreams might as well stay in my sleep. Who gives a shit? Clearly not me. I'll just stay in hospital and be miserable for the rest of my short fucking life. Jesus. Entry two. So I tentatively asked Alana to read my stories. Well, not all of them, just the ones I want to publish. I won't be able to publish them now. Oh well, she's the biggest, biggest critic I have anyway. She said she would. It makes me nervous. I don't know why. When we were studying, she used to read what I wrote. But that was for school. After I graduated and decided to write full-time, she wasn't interested. Started off not having time nor interest for it. Ended up shouting at me every time I mentioned it. Clearly, dying is the exception. I've always wondered what she'll say. I'll never find out. She said she was too busy. It was just five short stories. She could have read it in the evening. She doesn't spend with me. I know she hates seeing me like this, but, won't, but she won't be seeing me at all soon enough. It would, it would be nice if she could just think about me. And she's three. Wow, that was the first night out I've had in so long. The usual gang asked me to go out with them for the first time in a while. Since I told them I was on the treatment, really. Since I told them I was on the treatment, really. Oh, that's the first time. Uh, they were a bit sympathetic and annoying at first, but once the alcohol kicked in, things went back to normal. 
I haven't been drunk in so long either. It was great. I could forget all about this shit and just laugh and dance and do whatever the hell I want. I got tired and a bit wheezy. The treatment really does kick you in the balls. But I had a good time. I refused to let I let it bring me down, not even for one second. Alana was worried. I know she was, but I appreciate her in accepting my choice. She doesn't always do that. I think they'll ask me to join them more often now. They were so scared of it before. I think they were terrified they would break me, but all they can all they can all try but they can try all they like. Life can't get rid of me that easily. Uh, entry four. Things were going great. Just great, until she said she wanted to move house. Alana did her Alana thing and decided she wanted to move. So of course we have to. She hated our home from the beginning. She wanted to live in the country, uh, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Somewhere boring. Just so we could have a better place for our budget. I don't care about living in a fancy house. Fancy houses don't make good homes. Back then she knew how to compromise, so we got this place on the outskirts of the city. I had a vision for it, for it the moment we stepped in. The landlord is a bitch, but she's just a stepping stone. We'd be out of there as soon as Alana got a promotion or could publish my book. It wouldn't be a hassle when we moved because we already live in the city of our dreams. We're already a part of the community and know our way around. We'd just be living in a slightly fancier place. All right, fancy houses can be homes if you earn them. I'll admit it. But living in a shitty place neither of us want just so we can have fancy shit is cheating. I hate it. I don't want to live in the middle of nowhere so I can have a hospital bed in the living room and a stupid accessible old person bathroom. That will mean I won't be able to get away from it, from everything even when I go home. But Elena... Elena? Alana? But Alana has to get her way has to get her way with my life once again. So I'll just live in the middle of nowhere in a shitty unfamiliar house that looks like a hospital. It's all in my best interest, of course. So after all that, shitty day, big arguments, stony silence, long as fuck car drive, all to be told that I'm dying. Alana won't even look at me. I don't want I don't want to look at me. What the fuck do I do even do? Jesus. Jesus. You murdered me. Okay. 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 I'm just gonna expound while the rain goes in the background. <sighs> These two people seem toxic for each other. I'm sure that they loved each other at one point in time. I know that one of them is dead. I'm gonna talk about them in the present tense, like they're both alive. Um, I'm sure that they loved each other at some point in time. But that changed, it seemed, around uh, graduating of university. Because obviously one person is a free spirit and the other person is there to pay the bills and they both feel um held down by that i guess like alana she wants to do things but she can't because she's got to work all the time she's got to pay for the bills and she all of this and then rebecca is like i just want to be free and all that jazz but i'm sick um, and you don't care about what I think anymore, and blah, 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 blah. But Rebecca is also being super selfish. Jesus. It's like, sure, you want to be a writer. Great. Be a writer. Go get a job where you can write in your spare time and help pay the bills. It's not that hard. And maybe you'll get some creative energy from wherever you work. Unless, of course, you work in a stupid job. But, you know, there's a lot of stupid jobs out there that will still allow you to be creative in your spare time. <sighs> and Alana. Jesus, she's dying. Just let her let her do let her do some things. And what well, I don't okay, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Next. <laughs> I guess leave. Okay. Yeah, leave the room. Go see Ghostman. I did to it. I heard it somehow. And I have it all wrapped up right now, and it kind of helps, but it just hurts. Ouch! It's a pinch. Boop. There's a thump, 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 thump. Thump, 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 thump. Is she still standing there? Well, apparently I need to save. It's waiting for me. Dots! What does it want? It hasn't done anything to me yet. It feels like Rebecca. What if it's okay? Maybe I should approach it. But then maybe I should grab a knife from the kitchen first. Just to be safe. Um. 
<laughs> so you're reading it like this is just like, your choices are left, right, or elevator. <laughs> go elevator. Um, well, I think if I go in, it's gonna attack me. But if I go get a knife, just in case it's, I don't, mm, mm, maybe it's a friendly ghost, let's go in. <laughs> Attacks a ghost with a knife? <laughs> That's really what I want to know. I have the feeling there's multiple endings. <laughs> go north, go south, go elevator. I'm gonna have to go elevator. That's a hand. Um. Dude. Seriously? Okay. This whole time, this girl has just been like, I just want to be with Rebecca, blah blah blah. Accept your offer. You're gonna die. And it's gonna be, you know, probably bad, but you'll be together in the afterlife, and then you can nag each other the entire time. <laughs> hmm. It wasn't Rebecca. No, no shit. But aside from some inconsistency in both memory and personality, its actions were almost identical to hers. And that was real enough for me. What? Okay. Okay, what? <laughs> what? What? What the hell? <laughs> I moved to an affordable country home just like I wanted. Me and my ghost friend. It was a nice place, somewhere comfortable where I could hide Rebecca from the I barely spoke and it never felt human to me. Oh, it barely spoke, and it never felt human to me. But I would go on to pretend that things were just like... They were. were you sleeping with the ghostman? <laughs> okay. What? What is going on? <laughs> what is this game? <laughs> what? <sighs> okay. Go to it, okay? Just... Life didn't really change after Rebecca came back. I got another office job. At first, it was refreshing to be around co-workers that didn't resent me, but my life was too secretive to ever make friends. I mean, how could I bring someone home and say, This is my house. This is my dead wife. Don't mind her if she just stands around in a corner staring at you through her hair. It's fine. <laughs> it may have been the same old routine, but I wasn't in it alone. <laughs> what the hell? <coughs> okay. Also got a new jacket. Looks great. Hey, sweetie. Wait, <clears throat> let me get my grudge voice going on. Excuse me. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that for very, ooh. That makes a really cool looking thing on the spectrum. Right? Dots. I often feel guilty, but never guilty enough to return to my grief. Never guilty enough to stop sleeping around with ghostmen over here. Uh... <laughs> Can't do it for very long. She's got the consumption. <laughs> oh no! Come with us, page eleven. What the hell, man? I just left with six. What? <laughs> Abnormal. Perhaps this was. Jane realized people could probably see her. They were in the open field that was at the back of her house. They walked in a line, the children in front, herself following, holding out their raw hands. What? They led her through the field. She didn't know how long they had been walking for. Whenever she faltered or hesitated without looking, they knew. Come with us. They would encourage her, so she continued, until they came to the lake. She stopped in her tracks. No, I'm not. I can't. They all stood in line and, to her, and turned to her. Excuse me. Uh, their faces, they, they faced her with blank expressions. They didn't speak as she expected them to. They waited. Jane's gaze darted between them and her burned hands. Burned ha I'm missing a lot of the story when you jump like this. Uh, the pain was making her restless. The, she shifted her weight from leg to leg, rocking from side to side. They waited. I can't come with you, she spoke quickly. 
They walked towards her. Jane felt her heart quicken. The little boy took her hand, as did the girl. The other boy took a hold of her dress. There's another boy now? Mm -hmm. They looked at her. The touch of their icy hands felt good against her burning skin. The three of them blinked at her expectantly, though they didn't speak. She took one step forward. They all stepped with her. She inhaled and took another step. Slowly, they made their way to the edge of the water. In there? She spoke softly. Jane could feel herself shaking again. Come with us, page 12. Come with us. They responded, stepping ahead of her in the water. Jane trailed her fingers along the surface of the water just as the children disappeared from view. She smiled. She followed. It was shallow at first. She stepped down a little deeper. The water was soft and soothing on her burning skin. It was cool, but not uncomfortable. It felt nice. Jane found herself welcoming it. Atypical. Finding yourself following three identical-looking expressionist children who showed up in the middle of the night into a lake was odd by anyone's standards, especially Jane's. She expected no one would believe her. Not that anyone would know. Jane lived by herself, but li had lived her life by the book, following all the rules. Such abnormal, bleh, such abnormality happen happening to the most normal person she knew herself. Jane trailed her fingers along the surface of the water, just as the children disappeared from view. She smiled. Okay. Okay. Dots. I died eleven months later. Whatever it was, our relationship was symbolic. Symbiotic, sorry. Uh, imitating loved ones to feed off a willing host to survive. As it turns out, there's only so long a person can last in such a relationship. Dots. I don't know if it was worth it. But it was easy. Huh. Okay. Okay. This is but one of six ends to Alana's story. Your choices incur real consequences, significantly altering your conclusion to Morph Girl. Will you find them all? I don't know, probably not. I mean, I might. I might. I might do a quick run of the last four. Maybe. Possibly. But not right now. Right now I'm going to end. And I'll see you next time. Bye!